And for the people online, I don't know how long is the lag is. Probably I think now is about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So unfortunately, I can't solve it because the network the issue at the university. Uh, and we are have two sessions today. That's why everyone here. We are have two sessions today. One is from now to three o'clock or two fifty, and the other part is from three to four fifty. So the one now we are gonna review about concept, and after that we have some worksheet for you to do uh, here, and we have some simple questions. To solve. So, at uh, meantime, I think Serena or Lewis is taking attendance. I don't know if. Okay, yeah, I think we already picked attendance in person. For the online one, we are thinking about it and how to do that. Um, okay, so today we are doing some review for the concept, and nothing new gonna be covered. And here is our real off topic. So we are start with conditional, uh, then we do operators, then we do head test, then we do input event. Uh, the other two probably, if you come to my previous workshop or tutorial session, you already hear about it. It's about loops and arrays. I add a little bit more to the old stuff. Uh, sorry, I you recycle stuff. <laughs> uh, so today we are gonna first talk about conditional. Um, so for the conditional, let's start with a simple question here, a simple code. If number is greater than 50, then we draw a rectangle. So that's going to be a, a simple conditional example. And we have two parts. The first part is a Boolean expression. Make sure it's only here, not, not the if. It's only one inside the bracket. So that's a it's, that's an expression here, uh, and we have another part is the code to execute if the expression is true. Yeah, and then we have we're gonna go to our operators because this is a condition. So we have our in our lecture slide that says relation operators, but usually I call it a, a comparison operator. That's gonna be I think it's more straightforward about what it is. So a comparison operator uh, compare is opens and return a logic value based on the uh, um, based on the whether the compression is true or false. Uh, and opens can be uh, pneumatic strings, logicals, and object values. In this course, we cover six of them, and I'm gonna reorder it. So the first one is greater than, the second one is greater than or equal to, third one is less than, fourth one is less than or equal to, and the other two are equal to, yeah. and the last one is not equal to. And for some of you, not all of you, you might use this. We say no, because this is called equity, this is the equity operator. It's check whether uh, do the two values are equal, but it's not strictly equal. I give you an example later. So what we should use is use three equal signs instead. And here is the example. So if we use two equal signs, this is not in the lecture, but I think it's good to cover it because lecture just say we should not use that, but it not did not say why. So we have some. We have some examples here. So hello is to equal sign hello. That's gonna be return true or false. True. Yeah. The second one, empty string compared with zero. Is that gonna be return true or false? false? You say false. Okay. The third one, zero, and compare with the string zero. Uh, false. False. Okay. The fourth one, empty empty string compared with zero. False. Not gonna change that. So that's one, two, three, fourth, right? That's what you were thinking. But here is the return. We have three, two, one, false. Why is because two equal sign is actually, if the two type are different, they are gonna, by default, it's gonna uh, convert to strings. Anyway, so don't use this. This is, I do some weird things at the current level. And we do the same thing, so, 
when you do not equal to, don't use one equal sign. You should use two equal sign instead. Any question about this part? I think no. So our conclusion here is three equal signs, please. A lot of you comes to me ask the code why it's not working. It's because it's three equal signs. You need to have three equal signs to test if it's strictly equal. Okay, now we're going to look at another example here. So we have another example. Um, we have a nested condition. So the first condition number is greater than 50, and other is we check if count is going to be 10. Uh, if both are true, then we are going to draw the rectangle. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't worry about that count equal to count plus one. Uh, and why show this is here? Because we are using it slightly later. So now we are going to talk about the second operator type, operation type we are going to talk about today. It's going to be the logic. Uh, we have three operators introducing this course. The first one is and, it's two and percent. And the second one is or, it's two straight lines. And third one is the not operation. Um, and my example given is A and B. A or B, or not A. Uh, let's try to use some uh, human understandable sentence to talk about the three. So the first one is the and operation. It's if both A and B are true, and then the expression is true, so A and B. If both of them are true, then it's true. The second is or, uh, it's gonna be if either A or B is true, then the expression is true. Uh, because A is true, uh, B is false, or B is false, B is true, A is false, or both of them are true, in the three situations, it's always gonna return true. Uh, the last one, I think, is a little bit weird, because usually we don't think about this. Uh, it's the not operation. What the not operation do is, if A is false, then the not A is gonna be true. So here I say, okay, so the not A is gonna be the opposite of A. That's what I usually say, but I don't know. Does this make sense or not? And now let's look at some common mistakes. We, as a human, we can understand what we are gonna do with this. We say, okay, so x is greater than 5 and x is less than 10. But as I usually say, computers are slightly a little bit stupid. So if we write this, it won't read this. So this is a now for coding. And what we should do, as we learned before, for the logic operator is we should use the AND operation. So that's going to be 5 uh, is less than x and uh, x is less than 10. So we should use that AND operation to connect them. Just one logic operation per, one logic operator per operation, I should say. Otherwise, it's gonna make things slightly complicated. And now we are look at a previous example I showed you, and we can make some modifications to this. So we can combine the first line and second line together, and we can just use one if statement. That's gonna be a number greater than 50, and the count is strictly equal to 10. Usually, if I say Serena smiled, that means something went wrong, so. What? <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk about strictly operators, something else. Uh, we have the uh, assignment operators. Uh, this is something weird or strange that's going to be, um, no, I should say this. The first one is the very common one we use every single day, that's we assign a value. And the second one, the third one, looks a bit strange, but sometimes we use it. And I think it just covered for half a slide in the lecture, so I think probably I should talk more about it. So the first one is assignment. The second one is called additional assignment. And the third one is called subtraction assignment. Uh, what all three do, I have some examples here, or something right on a human understandable sentence. The first one is we used to assign value to something. It always assigns the value from the right end to the left end. Always. 
And the second additional assignment. So if x plus a equal 5, it means x equal to x plus 5. And we have third one. Third one is going to be the subtraction. x minus equal 5, it means x equal to x minus 5. That's the three we can use uh, in I should not say daily life. I can't find another word. And we have another kind of operators, Icardia, uh, arithmetic operators. What this do is we have three of them being introduced this term. Um, probably that looks not that familiar, but the first one is the remainder, and the second one is the increasement, and third one is the decreasement. I have some examples here. So the first one, first example is 12 percentage sign 5 is going to be 2. It's going to count the reminder of 12 divided by 5. And we have the increment example going to be, uh, let's see, equal to 1, C++. plus plus. So C is going to be written 2. And we have the decreasement is, let's see, let's see is equal to 1, C minus minus, and uh, C is going to be 0. Now we are going to look at our example again. Is there another line we can change? We can change to what we just reviewed. Anyone want to answer this question? Oh, you made a common mistake. When we use the operator, we don't do equal to. We should just use count plus plus. If you give count plus plus back to count, guess what? It's not going to do anything. Uh, this is not a story. I don't want to talk it today because this is uh, if we put uh, plus plus before one, that's going to do, uh, do the job. But if we put plus plus after whatever, it's not going to do the job because what it do is it's going to return this value and add it again. Uh, that's another story. So when we use plus plus, don't put something equal to or some, you don't give the plus plus value to something else. We just use it like this. And now we are going to talk about hit test, our favorite part. First, we are going to talk about something easy. Oh, by the way, before I do the hit test, any question about the uh, conditional? Um, the modulo, Uh, that is because when you do a reminder, that means you divide by 2. So I do first is 5, second is 10. Uh, let's do it like this. So we have 12 divided by 5. If we say the first time, if, we, if it's 1, that's going to be 5. If it's 2, that's going to be 10. Uh, oh, okay. Then there's two numbers left. Do, do you know how we use this method? So if I do 2, that's going to be 10. Then I have 2, 2 is the reminder. So that's why, the, why it's 2. Oh. Like I get it, but I wouldn't be able to do long. It's OK. I don't think we're going to, I can't guarantee, but I don't think that's going to be in, uh, in our exam, because I, I don't think we should be this mathematical for our exam. I can't guarantee you, but if, if there are, it might be just one mark, so it should be okay, yeah. Don't let my boss I say that. <laughs> Any other questions? Have you allowed calculators for the exam? Huh? Have you allowed calculators for the exam? No, no calculator for the exam. It's saying that in the first sheet, I think. Any other questions? If no, we are going to our hit test. So we are going to talk about the circle hit test. Uh, first, we are going to draw a circle, and second, we are going to have our mouse. It's going to be mouse x, mouse y, and it can move anywhere on the canvas. When mouse x and mouse y inside the hit the circle, we are going to return hit. So now, how do we do the hit test? Is 
we are going to calculate the distance from the center of the circle to the mouse x and mouse y point. So what we can use is, hmm, we can use the distance, mouse x, mouse y, and 50, 50. If we would like to write a little bit more, um, I should not say nicer, but what we prefer is we should use a, um, mouse x, mouse y, and width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Now, um, let's put that to, into a variable. So we have our circle uh, diameter is 20, and our head disk is equal to distance mouse x, mouth y, width divided by 2, height divided by 2. Now we are going to put that into a conditional. So what should we put as the test here? Anyone want to answer? If head test is uh, less than so could be. If it tested less than circle D? Yeah. Mm. So, divide by two. Divided by two? Yeah. Which one is correct? So D divided by two. Yeah, that's correct because our we the circle D is the diameter when we want to hit test always the radius. What we learned in high school or elementary school is the radius of the circle is the diameter divided by 2. So remember that divided by 2 part. Any question about the uh, circle hit test? No? What is console log? Console, oh, console log is similar to print. Um, personal preference, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, why I use console.log is because print sometimes is sent to printer. That's why I use <laughs> yeah. console.log. And what's the question? Why is it with divided by two and Because that's at 50 50. Uh, my circle is at 50 50. Yeah, that's why it's with divided by two, high divided by two. I'm just going to use that. But because since it's at the center, uh, I should have said that. Yeah, I should say that earlier. <laughs> it's in the center. That's why I don't I use with divided by two and high divided by two. Uh, so let's go to the rectangle hit test. So for the rectangle hit test, we're going to still have the mouse X and mouse Y point, and we're going to draw our rectangle here. And I do four variables for that. So that's going to be rect X, rect Y, rect W, and rect H. Look, I did not use A, B, C, D. Don't use A, B, C, D or A, B, B, C, C, D, D. It's very hard to read. When I read, I, I have 220 students. When I mark assignment, I look, oh, you have A, A is equal to 1. I'm like, what A, A is? And you have A, A, A again. I'm, oh. <laughs> yeah, so let's use rect X. Rect Y, Rect W, Rect H, it's going to be X, Y position, width and height. That's easy to understand, right? Now we map this, gonna, we are going to mark this. When you would like to do a hit test, if you can't think that in your head, what you are going to do is draw it, and we are going to mark the point. So we are going to have our first point here. That's going to be our Rect X and Rect Y. That's a point here. And then we can mark the other point, or we can mark the more option. I, I hit C. Why? Who? I don't know. What? Is that C? -way? I don't know. Yeah, we have a rect W. So this one is the width. And we are going to uh, have a rect height. Yeah. So now we have two more points. We are going to do the um, upper, that's at your upper right. Yeah, upper right point first. So anyone want to tell you what that point gonna be? If we are gonna use the variables? Rect X, Rect X. And Rect Y. This one. Oh, that one. Rect X plus Rect Width comma Rect Y. Yeah, so that's gonna be Rect X plus Rect W and Y position is Rect Y. We do the same thing for the bottom left Bottom, that's left. Am I correct? That's left. Yeah. Bottom left point. Anyone want to answer? Not you. 
Anyone else want to have a try? Go ahead. Okay, you are correct. And if you answer correctly, we bring some candies for you. Uh, yeah, that's we have uh, we have rect x plus as x and rect y plus rect h as y. Now, are you gonna try the last point? Yes. I would like to talk about last point, but yeah, if you want to have a try, let's go. What's the last point gonna be? Rect x plus the rect w and rect x plus the. No. Oh, why, why are you doing? What? What's your x? It's it's plus the width. Right? What's the y? Plus the height. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Huh? What? What? Yeah. 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 That's really why. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. I can't. You did that. Yeah. You did that. No. You have to do both of us. Yeah, you, you need to do both. That's why I wanted to talk about it. That's easy and simple. We already have the most two. We have two already calculated. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the x from that point and take the y from this point. So the answer is going to be rect x plus rect w. That's the x. And y going to be rect y plus rect h. Yeah. So we have all points figured out. Now the next part is to put that into some condition. So we are going to compare our mouse x and the mouse y with those points. So first we have our mouse x. We are going to write it like this. It's going to be human understandable, but that's going to be suitable for computer. But at least we can figure it out. So first, our mouse x point. We would like the mouse x to be inside the rectangle. Uh, so what we are going to do is you can do less than or equal to, or you can just do less than. It depends on what question you ask. Let's suppose this question is it's for inside, not on the edge. So we are, need to need a mouse x need to be greater than mouse x. Why? It's because it needs to go inside. And the other part is uh, our mouse x need to be less than rect x plus rect w. And we can do the same thing for mouse y. We need a mouse y to be uh, greater than rect y and we need a mouse y to be less than rect y plus rect h. So now let's convert that to something the computer can understand. We can say this, the rect x is less than mouse x and the mouse x is less than rect x plus rect, w, rect w. And we do the same thing for the y. So it's going to look like this. Usually, usually it's OK at yeah, this time, but personally, I do prefer to put a mouse x uh, on the same end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the x, mouse x and the mouse y on the second line. So that's going to be mouse x need to be greater than rect x and mouse y. Oh, sorry, mouse x need to be greater than rect x. and Mouse y need to be less than rect x plus uh, rect w, same thing for the y. Uh, so now we are going to um, put them into order. That's good. And we need to connect all three or four conditions together. So what operation we are going to use if we would like to connect them together? What well, always you? Anyone else want to answer? I, I, I get... Two M percent? Yeah, so we are going to use 2M percent. That's 2M percent. Then now, the last step is we would like to put this into an if condition. So what we can do is we can put if out of there. And if it's been hit, that's going to be it. Any question about this part? If no questions, we will go to our next topic is what if the hit is it's not going to be, what if it's the other shapes? So it totally depends on your shape. Um, if the width to height ratio, uh, we have two scenarios here, situations here is if the width to height ratio is one to one, 
or a triangle shaped, shaped object or if the width to height ratio is not one to one. So if it's the first scenario, that's gonna be a circle as what we did in assignment three for the, uh, uh, the torpedo hit test. And the other part, we do a rectangle uh, as some of you did for your final project. I, I can't find an example in our course, sorry. Um, yeah. Any question about the hit test at all for all the hit test? If no, let's go to the input events. So first we are gonna talk about the keyboard event as an example, and then it can apply to the mouse events. Our question is, is a key pressed or key is pressed? I any other, any other any other people want to answer this question? For, for what? Key pressed or keep keys pressed? For what? Yeah. You ask a good question. Yes. For what? Yeah. So it totally depends. Both works. So the difference between key pressed is and key is pressed is key pressed is a function, but key is pressed is a rival, is a building rival. And key is pressed is called every time a key is pressed. But if the key is pressed, you need to, it only, it, it, the value is a boolean, and uh, it's true when key is pressed, uh, and it's false it's when nothing is pressed. So that one is a, is a value, and the key is pressed is a function. So basically, key is pressed will do something, but, uh, sorry, key pressed will do something, but key is pressed, it won't do anything. It just leave it there. So it totally depends on what situation and where we are gonna use it. Let's talk about key is pressed first. So key is pressed is, if I just stop method, you don't need to know what it is. Uh, SCS 105, you don't need to know what it is. It's okay, yeah. Uh, so, oh, my bad. <laughs> no, it's, why? Uh, let's suppose nothing happened. Let's start again. So key pressed is a method that's a function. Yeah. And one key is pressed, the code inside the key pressed function will run. So we have our key pressed function here. So when any key is being pressed, it's gonna the console gonna show key is pressed. That's the example of how to use key pressed. And we have an example of key is pressed. Uh, hopefully the next slide is gonna be uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah, next slide is cool, that's correct. So we have key is pressed, this is a rival. So look how we're gonna use it. We're gonna put it somewhere. Uh, it don't need to be inside job, but at least it need to be inside a function that's been called in job because setup don't have any uh, input events. So we, what we do is we put that into a condition and if key is pressed, we use console.log key is pressed. The main difference between those two are the key press only run once and key is pressed if you're putting jaw. Some keys being pressed, usually, 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 you press more than uh, What's 60 divided by one? One, one, one sixty. That's minute, microseconds. Yeah. So uh, every one point six. Yeah, mostly one point six. Yeah. Many seconds. So if you hold your key more than that, that's going to be run more than once. So the situation we use key as pressed is like our last assignment. We would like balloon to rise when the key is being held. So in that situation, we should use key is pressed. Otherwise, we are use key pressed. Any questions about this part? I think that's a no. Let's talk about mouse events. So our mouse event is gonna be similar to the keyboard event. Uh, you do similar things for mouse pressed, or mouse pressed and mouse is pressed. If no questions, we are going to our boring part. That's going to be 
loops and arrays. Uh, it's gonna be similar to what I did in about two weeks ago, but I added a bit more stuff. And since I saw a lot of new face here, so I suppose we can go over it again. The first one is we're gonna talk about a wow loop. Wow loop have three parts, and we have an example here. So the first part is we should do an initialization. Uh, our Y is a global here, I already defined somewhere else, so that's why you don't have a let here. Um, yeah, we have initialization, the initialization is Y equal to 10, so Y is 10, and we do a test expression. Similar to what I said in, in conditional, the text expression is only the inside part, not include the while and the bracket, it's only the inside part. That's the test expression. And we have a last part, is the update. So this is a while loop. And let's take a look about a for loop. So we do the same thing. We have another example. They do the same thing, draw a rectangle for 20 times. And we have the initialization here, let y equal to 10. And we have our condition or test expression, y is less than height. And we have our last part is the update. That's gonna be y plus equal to 20. And let's put them together. All right, they look similar. Looks similar, right? So we can say a while loop and for loop is interchangeable. It's interchangeable. If anyone have question about this, Give me a question, Give me, send me your example, I can give you an example back. So now let's do something to the for loop. This is how I prefer to use a for loop because uh, what we usually do is we run a program for i times. That's how I think it should be used for a for loop, but it's not true or false because you can use it when whatever you want. Uh, yeah, so let's keep it like that. And we can say our while loop is execute while the condition holds, or condition mids. And for the for loop is, um, it's gonna execute its body for i times, so it's this part for i times. Any questions about this part? If no, we are gonna talk about, I already say this, it's my third time to say this, how the hell I'm gonna write a function of i. We are let's gonna take a look. So what a function of i is when, it's very useful when we draw some similar shapes across the canvas, or when we do initialization for the array. So we have an example here, and you can see we have two parts. So the first one is initial value, and the other one is the increment. So our, we would like to draw, for example, if we like start to draw the rectangle at 10, at 50, 10, and we only increase the y value. So our initial gonna be 10, and you use plus i times your increment. You want to be to, to be 20 pixels apart, so that part is gonna be 20, and in our past assignment, assignment eight, it's want to be 100 pixels apart, so this part should be 100. Any questions about this part? I think no. Wait, what do you call the 10 again in this case? I hmm? What is the 10 referred to as in this case? Oh, it's the initial value. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this 10 is the initial value. I don't want to say initialize. Uh, because that's for something we reserve this word for something else. So I, I use it as the initial value, and this is the increment. So here are two code. I asked this question for a couple times now. Which one do I prefer, or which one do us prefer?
I, I want to hear from someone else. Sure. Yeah, it's the second one. Why is the second one? Uh, don't say shorter. Yeah, it's more modular. Yeah, that's correct. It's more modular for the second one. And the first one, well, I think, yeah, you can write it like that. We don't need that marks, but probably you should do something like on the second one. Yeah. We're going to talk about our next topic. Before that, any question about loops? If no questions, we'll go to, uh, go to array. So again, that's from our lecture. An array is a special kind of variable that holds multiple values. And each array has a name, just like a simple variable. And each of a value is stored in the array called element. Each element is accessed using a unique index. And the index is a whole number starting from zero. So it's going to be zero, one, two. Yeah, and here is an example for an uh, array. Why I put this example here is because we have multiple types. Where is my, why my animation is gone? Sorry, I don't know why my animation is not working today. Uh, yeah, so this array has multiple type of The element has multiple types of values, I should say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one, first four, true false, true false, that's all boolean. And we have two and five, that's number, and the last one is string. So we can store multiple type inside array. Um, I think most of you are in GBDA. So you're going to take CS106. Uh, don't, 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 don't. No, you need to take CS106, that's your graduation requirement. <laughs> um, um, so, you are found something interesting next term. I su assume you are going to take that next term, and that's going to be, you can put array inside array. Yeah, that's going to be called a nested array. That's going to be your... Oh, I did a nested array for our group. Oh, not like everyone. That's okay, uh, uh, I did not hear it, yeah. Um, I assume. Anyway, that, that's... I don't know. I, I added this slide last night, probably. Don't worry about animations. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's still look at this, right? <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Yeah, let's still look at this array. So how are we going to access the value of the, uh, access the element of the array? How are we going to do that? We said that before use index and now we are do something to this array so we do a0 it's gonna be false and we are gonna print a1 so what value now in the console false. yeah that's false uh, why is false because it's the first uh, the first element is that the first from left or second from left? The, the second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. Yeah, so our console.log a1 gonna return the uh, element one. Usually I call it second element because. Um, don't say it doesn't matter that loud because I just said I, I usually call that the second element and someone say it doesn't matter. No, it matters. Well, anyway. It doesn't matter, yeah. That's 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 correct. It doesn't matter oh, okay. because we are printing out the second element, not the first element. Yeah. Uh, and we are going to do length. I think most of you already used length in the last assignment because we said that enough time. Please, please, please use array.length. So what does array.length do is it by default it returns the length of the array. Or if we give any value to array.length, that's going to be set the length of the array. 
we create, for example, if I got length is equal to seven, that means we create seven empty elements. Now we are going to talk about our interesting part, uh, length.index. Why length is always off by one is because length is coming starting from one and length is coming, oops, length is coming starting from one and index is starting from zero. So now let's look about this array again. And here's the result for the code. So that's going to be true, false, true, false, two, five, and test. And one, one request from us is please, you need index when you go over the entire array. Don't say, oh, I is less than seven, I plus plus. If you are using the elements, if you like go over the entire array, use the index. Don't use a number, don't use a magic number. Please, please, please use the index. So you mean once, it's, once you already initialized? Yeah, once exactly. you already initialized, okay. use the index. Yeah. yeah. So. Now we're gonna talk about how to initialize the array. That's a new part. So what my suggestion is use a for loop for most of the cases. Any questions? If no questions, we are have a break. And if you have, if you want to talk with me, I'll be here. And otherwise, we are start our um, reviews at three ten. And if you come here late, please see Serena to check in, and uh, she will give you the handout and other stuff. Okay, so coming back from the break now. So for the next uh, part of the review session, Serena and I are going to be alternating through the questions. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Uh, okay, so for 1A, it's asking what's printed to the console after all of this runs. So we have four variables. A, it says is equal to 1. B, which is 4. Uh, C zero and D is zero. Uh, okay, so the way to figure this question out is basically just read it line by line and like track the variables as you go through. Uh, and I think just like writing down the variables and yeah, like tracking how they change through uh, as we go through the program is a good way to like visualize this. So, anyways, uh, in the for loop. We can see that the loop executes two times because i is less than two um, and i plus plus, so it's going to loop through this code two times. Uh, so first, we're going to see that a is going to be equal to a times b. One times four is four, so like that. And then b is equal to b times a, so this is going to turn into sixteen. Um, and then this is going to be a two on the grid. So d at 0, which, as Christopher mentioned, is the first element of the array, is going to be a minus b. Uh, so this is going to give us negative 12. And then uh, the next line says d at 1 is going to be equal to b minus a. So it's going to give us positive 12. Uh, and then c is going to be um, d at 0 divided by d at 1. So d at 0, we know, is negative 12, and d at 1 is positive 12. So c is going to increment. Uh, if you do that, you're going to get negative 1. So C is going to increase by negative 1, which is the same thing as subtracting 1. So we get negative 1. Now, this is a loop. When you loop code, it runs however many times you loop it. Uh, so if we were to do all of this again, we would obviously find the exact same answer. And we're going to see that C is going to be equal to negative 2. And the answer? Negative 2. C is printed. So that's how you go through that one. Uh, cool. So that's. Uh, okay, moving on to B. Yes. 
Oh, yeah, question? Uh, A? Yeah, sure. Just like the whole thing or like any specific part? Um, okay, so basically, uh, these four variables are declared. Uh, I'll reset them to what they were originally. So these four variables are declared. We have one, four, uh, zero, and an empty array. Uh, and then we see that the next piece of the code, starting on line six, if we're just you know reading it line by line, is a for loop. And uh, just by reading the loop, uh, we can see that this code, this loop, is going to execute two times. So all of the mathematical uh, things inside that loop are basically just going to be read through line by line twice. Um, so yeah, the first calculation in there is a is equal to a times b which is how we get four. And then the next line, it's gonna update B to be 16. Uh, am I saying it this <laughs> uh, So those first two lines, updating A and B, those are the variables, just their values being changed. So then what's happening on the next two lines is the array. The values of the array are being changed. And we know from indexing that uh, this is affecting the zeroth element and the first element of the array on each respective line. Um, so the zeroth element of the array is going to be equal to a minus b. Well, the value of a is 4, and the value of b is 16. So if you just do the math, you get a equal. And then similarly, it's the same thing, but just reversed, just because it's now b minus a, which is going to be positive 12. Um, is everything like clear so far? Okay, cool. And then the last line there is going to be C is going to increment by uh, the zeroth element of this array divided by the first element. Uh, and if you divide this, you get negative 1. So C is going to increase by negative 1. So, or just decrease by 1. Um, okay, so now that we've gone through each of the lines of the loop, uh, What's going to happen next is that the exact same thing is going to happen because we just ran all the calculations. Yeah, so then if the exact same thing happens, we're going to get negative 2. And then you can see that outside of the loop, um, 13, line 13 is going to print C, and the answer is going to be negative 2. Is the reason it doesn't change it when you like, change the A and B again, like doubling it? is because you're only changing it in that for loop and you're not changing it outside? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, yeah, so if there's any questions, question. So the less is to um, would be, would be the answer is negative two because I'm only two times? Yeah. Yeah, the answer is negative two. Any question here? Maybe it would change, right, when the for loop repeats one again. I have to give two answers. Negative two is the answer, but uh, a, the values of a and b would change. It's not changed because b is equal to b times a. And a is also equal to a times b. No, but a and b have, okay. In the first one of the for loop, a is 4 and b is 16, right? Yeah. In the second one of the for loop, a will be 4 times 16, and b will be 16 times 16. That's where I think the second will reach that's weird. I don't think it's the editor. But C is negative. <laughs> also, you don't, you don't need to track the values of A and B to calculate this just because you know that B0 and B1, if you divide them by each other, it's negative 1. Just by the variables themselves. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Pretty much, it comes out as that. Uh, oh, is that is that two negative dividing? Is that two negative dividing? What's your negative? Oh, did the question answer? Are you talking about the negative dividing, or the? It's okay. We'll just move on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So if this was 5, then the answer would be negative 5, right? You say I had five times? Yeah, if it was less than five. Okay, we're just going to move on. I, I need to run this. There's too much calculation. So for part B, uh, what we'll need to do is make this while loop just drop five ellipses on the screen. Uh, okay, so first of all, we're going to need to define our variables. Uh, and we can see just by looking at this question that, uh, well, we know we draw an ellipse at an x position, so we're going to need a variable for representing the x position. Uh, so we can pick. This count variable that I'm writing here, uh, this is going to represent the x position of the ellipse. Uh, and obviously, if it's representing the x position, we want it to be here. Uh, now, if you think back to labs that we've done in the past where you had to like draw a bunch of lines on the screen to a certain point, uh, that certain point was a limit, or just an x position that you want to draw until. Uh, so we can just increment x. Uh, until that point. So, yeah. And then finally, uh, to write the loop, we want to do, we need to define the limit. So we're going to say this starts at a certain point. Uh, and then we need to define the limit. Uh, sorry, if you. And then finally, uh, how we write a while loop? Uh, well, count is And if you plug this into the editor, you'll find that this draws five circles. Question: Are there only three uh, things in the list, and not four? Would it just be circles? Uh, you could use circle. So the last thing for ellipse is optional. Um, but yeah, you can use three or four for ellipse. If you use three, it'll assume that you, you're using this one for the second one as well. Okay. Yeah. Question? Can you also do this with just one variable? Just i. So that i equals five for example, and i is less than 100 divided by five? You could, yeah. Yeah, that's another way to do this. There's multiple ways to do, I guess, a lot of these questions. But yeah, that's um, Question. Would you be able to show anything like that? So, you go through as it's running, what is it doing? So, the first time it's 5, it sets the circle at 5, right? And yeah. 15? Yeah, exactly. 15, 25, so on and so forth. Until count becomes 45, and then it's checking if count is less than 1, which is 50, so that one's going to execute. But then once count becomes 55, then it won't execute. Why do we choose 50 uh, Because we want to draw 5. So we want count to update 5 times. You can just set it to 45. I guess you can, yeah. Oh, okay. If it's less than equal to, then yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, but it would have to be less than or equal to. Yeah, less than or equal to. Um, 
Oh, you're right. <laughs> My mistake. It should be ten. Good catch. To drawing an animation, so which of the following draws five vertical circles, um, with the middle one being centered at the female's position? It's, so it's kind of similar to the one of the last questions that we had, but it's the uh, rectangles we have, Philip, and I want a vertical instead of horizontal. So just to give you an idea how it should look like, so just basically five circles in a row, and the center one is where you have the most, kind of thing. Um, let me just read through the four options. Uh, any guesses? A, B, C, D. We've got 25% chances. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is correct. So, first of all, we're we're drawing vertical circles. That means the y position will be changing. The the x position will be the same. So x will be fixed and y will be changing. So we can see that. Uh, options C and D are false because they have like mouse X plus I times 10, which um, varies based on the I value. So C and D is off the list. And then in between A and B, um, so there, yeah, I made it kind of, kind of confusing, but. <laughs> so part A, uh, in A, the for loop draws five circles. Uh, and in B, we have drawn a circle first and then we run a loop that draws two circle in each iteration and it run the loop twice. Any idea why B is the right one instead of the A? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So A, we draw it from the top and then we keep adding 10 each time. So it's kind of similar to what uh, Christopher was saying. The update is 10. The initial, the initial value is mouse Y and the update is 10. So you keep adding 10. 10, 10 to the bottom. Whereas B, we draw the we draw the first one in the middle. Uh, so mouse X, mouse Y, and then in each iteration we draw that uh, we draw circles that are exactly I times 10 apart from the center one. So we draw one above and one below it. So uh, in B, we draw the first one here outside the loop, and then we draw these two because they are exactly 10 pixels. Yeah, they're exactly 10 pixels away from the center one. And then we draw the uh, other two because that will be exactly two times ten, so twenty pixels away from the center. So B should be the right answer. Is there any questions? Yep. B and D. So um, you can see that in part B, it's the, the circles are all mouse X, and then the Y value is mouse Y plus or minus I times ten. Whereas for D, it's mouse X plus or minus Y I times 10. And then mouse, uh, and then the Y position is always mouse Y. So the D will draw a horizontal version of this. So five circles horizontally. And the middle one will be centered at the mouse position. So because we, uh, we know that we are drawing the vertical one, so that means the, all of the X position will be the same, right? Because X is, X is a horizontal distance. So it's the X position of all the circles are the same. So we're not changing the x circle, uh, the x position, but we're only updating the y position since they're varying. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why b, it, a, and b are the ones that are updating the y y positions based on the like iteration. So yeah. So b will be the right answer. Any other questions? All right. I guess I'll move on to the next question. So. Uh, fill in the code to draw an ellipse at 50-50 of size 50, which is animated by X moving to the right to screen. So this should be um, pretty straightforward. You guys should know how to do this by heart. Uh, I'll just give you a minute to finish this and we'll, we'll double check the answer.
everyone got their answer for this one? Any volunteers? Any guesses for what the first function is called? Yes. Setup? Yeah, that's right. Setup. You know, like tons of time. Uh, and for the ellipse, yeah. the ellipse function, what should go in the first blank? Yeah? Plus x? Yeah, plus x. Because x is the, uh, the position that we're, 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 we're animating, the x position we're animating. <coughs> and the one after it? Yeah? I think that's right. Yeah, 50. Because the, um, the y position does not change. Yeah. And what's the last line after your lips? Yeah? X plus plus. Yeah, X plus plus. Or other things like X is equal to X plus one or X plus equal to one. Anything that updates X will be good enough. And yeah, it doesn't even say how much you should move, right? You can do X plus 10, anything. Any, any questions for this one? All right. So. Uh, okay, so the next question is kind of a two-part question. So for the first part, it would be, or it's basically just asking what is printed to the canvas initially? And does anyone think they have the answer? Yeah. Four. Sorry, no, the, on the first iteration of the loop, it's three. Oh, wait, well, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you actually, funnily enough, you got the second part. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so on the first iteration, uh, three is printed because x equals three is obviously called before print. But then if those were switched, uh, the question says, what if print x was before x equals three? Well, x would never be changed because um, on line three, the let x equal two in setup is locally defined. So that means x equals two within setup, but not uh, outside of setup. Uh, okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, moving on to B. So there's two print statements in here. And if you actually plug this into the editor, you get an error because the last print statement would be trying to print X and you'd have to use console.log, but don't worry too much about that. Um, yeah, just try and figure out uh, what the first and second values printed would be. If someone thinks they have it, you can put your hand up. Is the first one two? The first one is two. Yeah. And did anyone get anything other than two? Or seems like we're good with that. And then this. Can you explain why it's two? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so let x equal one. X starts as one. Uh, within setup, uh, x becomes two. And that's a global update because it doesn't have the let before it, so x is now equal to two. And then draw is executed. Let x equal to three means that x becomes three within draw. And then on line eight, the function, its, it's name is x. Uh, x of x is called. So it passes three into the function x, which that doesn't help uh, with explaining this. <laughs> but basically, the function x is called with the value three. And then what the function x does is it takes its parameter, which is x, subtracts 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2, and then it prints uh, that value. And then for the second part, um, or sorry, was there a question? What's 11 for? That doesn't do anything, right? Because it's not in any function. For the first part, it does not do anything. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it run an error, though, because it's not in a function? Uh, no, because x is already defined. But it's, it's, it, I just don't get it because it's nowhere. It's like in nothingness. Yeah. So how does it run? Uh, well, if you took away all the other code, it would just work, basically. Oh, like, it doesn't okay. need to be in a function. Okay. Okay. Any other question? What about the x plus plus here? So that is going to affect the second one. Okay. And that, well, it may or may not run. Uh, but yeah, so what do we think for the second one? 
It is five. And yeah, if you just follow through, you can see that the x equals four runs, and then x plus plus runs, four plus one is five, and then it prints five. Uh, any questions on that, or good to move? Cool. Okay, last one for global local variables. So we have this function, and it's asking, or we have multiple functions, and it's asking what happens to this variable, and what is printed to the console if you follow all the way through. First person who thinks they has, uh, have the answer, you can put your hand up. So the correct answer is not four. Oh wait, let's see. Yeah. It is three. So this is kind of a fun one. Um, but basically, why it's three? is because lines three and four do nothing. They don't actually affect the variable. And well, why do they not affect the variable? If you look at the, fun they call functions with the variable, and if you look at the functions, they change the number, right? But the thing is, for a variable to be updated, it would have to be stooges equals morph of stooges. If you just call the function, um, it only affects, like for example, subtract one, that only affects parameter locally. So basically what that means is because the variable is not reassigned to these functions, it never updates. So all that actually, like in the sense of the question, all that you actually need to consider for this is let stooges equal three and then print stooges because those don't actually affect it. And if you don't understand that, uh, I would recommend like running this in the editor and trying to play around with it and seeing if you can get uh, the value of stooges to update. But does that make sense to everybody? How did you say, if, if we wanted to make this work, how would you make it work again? You said stooges are you need to do like a let stooges equal to more. Um, why does more do not affect it? Like not affect it? Uh, so basically, more two um, just returns a value. So what it returns is stooges plus one. So that line, the more two function, essentially just becomes four. And if you just type four into the editor, it'll just say, okay, four. Like it won't do anything. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't affect it. So if it was stooges equals morph two, then that would change it, but otherwise it doesn't change it. So in setup, you have to do let stooges equal morph two? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense, and if we we're cool on that, then Serena will do number four. <laughs> He's trying to kill me. Um, <laughs> literally, I stare at part A for so long to figure it out. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I'm just walking this through. Um, we can use the same trick that Lewis was mentioned. So we have variable. We want to just like write it out so to keep track of the value of the variable at all times. So we have t or f, and it is initialized to false, not to true. Okay. So we get into the setup, we see if t or f. So um, let's skip a little bit here, but it basically means if t or f it is, tr is true, then we run the code. 
So at this point, okay, T or F is true, so we get into the code within there. So basically this part, right? And then we have another if statement that says if not T or F or T or F. So not T or F is the inverse of true, so false, if false, or, uh, or true, that will be true. So because it's, because it's either true or false, and true is true, so it's gonna be true. Does that? <laughs> Does that make sense? Or, uh, yeah, or if you wanna remember it, the, any value or the inverse of its value is always gonna be true, but you don't have to worry about it. So, yes? I'm sorry? Oh, uh, line, line five, sorry. Line five. Because we already gone through line four because T, of, T or F is true at this point, so we're getting into into the con the code in the in the first condition. So we're on line five, and then not true or not T or F or T or F because T or F is true, so line five will be true. Does that mm. hope that makes sense? So if it's not true or true. So if it's false, or true. Yeah. And is one of the true or false true? Like, is one of the true and false? Like, you have two values, true and false. Is one of them true? Yes. Yeah, because you have the true, right? So that's why it's true. <laughs> I know, it can be confusing. That's why, that's why I'm saying, he's trying to kill me. If you okay. can solve this, it'll be good for the exam. <laughs> um, yeah, so on line five, the condition is true. We're getting into the code uh, in that if else statement again. So right now we come to line six, okay? We let T or F to be not T or F, so T or F is gonna be false right now. All right, that's still fine, yeah? For line seven, seven and nine, it's saying like if it is whatever the heck it is, and, so if it's true and it's true, what's, what's, what are we comparing it to? Like what is this true for? What's true? The, sorry, the true on line seven? Seven and nine both have just like if this is true mm -hmm. and and something. Yes, yeah, those those two are the are just like Boolean values. It can be either true or false. So true is just so, true. False wait, so is just false. Imagine we have a random variable that's a Boolean. Um so you just have a you have a value there, basically. <laughs> so it's because we're I think I would say like like in the conditional like if it says true within the brackets it executes and it says false at all within the brackets it doesn't execute. Yeah. So like if that variable if that variable was false, uh, you see the and in there, right? So yeah. it'd say false and true, and then false and true would evaluate to false because both aren't true. Maybe I can do a little bit on this question. <laughs> wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. You can't have a false in there because it won't have, execute. You okay, can't yeah, have a false no, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. I hope. Because it's like. Well, it's. It's like. Like, it's not going to. If this, if T or F, like, at the start of T or, T or F is false, it's not going to run. That's the same principle. Yeah, like, if you had false and true. It's not going to run because both of them are true. Exactly. Yes, exactly. This turns into false. But if this was true, you'd have true and true. Yeah. And then this would turn into true. That's right. Okay. Yeah. No, false and false will be false. Right? Yeah, false and false will be false because none of them are true. They're not exactly like the, these two be the same, but it will have to be those have to be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not checking if they're the same, it's checking if they're if they're both true. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, wait, so it turns blue. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I thought it was red when I, when I first tried it. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so, as we explained a little bit, so on line 7, because T or F is false at this point, and false and true is not true, so this, that won't be executed, and we skip to line 9, and we have false and false, which is also false, so that won't be executed either, so we go to the else statement on line 11, which prints blue. Yeah. 
I'm sorry that for that it. question. <laughs> yeah, he made it. Blame him. Um, and I don't think it will be have this similar question. Not that scale of, yeah. of thinking about it. But just, yeah, just getting familiar with kind of notes, I guess. <laughs> Any other questions for part A? Right. We'll just move on to another disaster, part B. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. It's blue, yes. Is part A all good? Part A is good? So yeah, if you look at part B, we have we have fill color A and B. To be honest, I didn't even know there was a fill color that exists. So I'm just gonna look at A and B because all the conditionals involve A and B. So A was initially 50, and B is 25. So instead of on line eight, we see that there is an if. If A is less than 50, well, is 50 less than 50? No. no. So that, that's not going to be executed. And then we get into else if. So is A is equal to 50. A is equal to 50, so we'll, we'll execute it line 12, which divides A by 25. So 50 divided by 25 is 2. Right? So basically, after line 12, our A becomes 2. Is it so far so good? Yeah. And then we go into line 15. It says if A is less than three. Is two less than three? Yes. Yes, so we're gonna execute fill color to be equal to green, and then we'll fill the ellipse with green, basically. Because if you look at line 23, we're filling fill color. Mm -hmm. okay. Yay, so it's green. It's not as bad as A. <laughs> <laughs> B? Yeah. So B at the very top of top of the program before setup, uh, we have A is 50 and B is 25, right? On line two and three. And then we go into setup on line eight. We see that if A is less than 50, there's there's an if if else statement for if A is less than 50. Is 50 less than 50? No, 50 is not less than 50, so we skip to this else if part. So on line 11, uh, yeah, the one I'm highlighting right now. So on 11 says else if A is equal to 50. Well, 50 is equal to 50, so yeah, that's true. We're gonna execute line 12. So line 12 says we're gonna divide A by 25. So, yeah. uh, so 50 divided by 25 is two. Uh, so after line 12, our A value should be uh, and then we go into, so that's all for the first FL statement. And then we go into line 15, it says if A is less than three. Is two less than three? Yeah, two is less than three, so we are executing the piece of code in here. So fill color is equal to green. There's a question. And, sorry, just one second. And then A is become to negative 100, but it doesn't matter because we're, we're done with all of this part. We're all we're done with all the second, um, the second conditional. So we'll just uh, because on line twenty three we're filling fill color, so we're just filling green. And yes, what was it? If this wasn't draw, would it be a because it would run it down? Uh, it could. Be. Yeah, it could yeah, be it could if it's be. in draw because your A will be updated to negative hundred, and when you run it, it's it's going to be less than fifty, and the A is going to be equal to hundred. Yeah, and then things just, yeah. Okay. Just, just that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's an important point, because it's in setup, like it only Yeah, it only runs once. That's true. I did not, I did not check this with setup. But yeah. Is there any questions on part B? Are we all good? Yeah. No, there's part C. Oh, no. <laughs> so part C, yeah. Hopefully this should be the easier one. So right now we're just trying to find the minimum of an array. We don't have to worry about what the array is. Um, and just write the if condition in there. So we've, we have some 
lab question that finds maximum right now, which is doing something similar. Just make sure that you do know actually how to write that line of code. Yeah? Okay, my guess is if i is less than index, yeah. if i is less than index, okay. Well, we'll see if there's any other. Any other guesses? Yeah? Can it be array i greater than array index? OK, so here's our first guess. Our second guess was array i is greater than array index. Yes? yes? Array i is less than array index. OK, so that's our third guess. Array i is less than array index. Oh. So let's take a look. So we want to find the minimum of an array. So we need to make sure we're checking the we're actually checking the um, elements in an array. So uh, unfortunately, it wouldn't be ILS and index. So we need to make sure that we do put the array, the ARR. Did I use ARR? Yeah, ARR somewhere, so that we're comparing two elements in an array instead of the actual the index of the, of the array. So and then we because we need to find the minimum. And we have index that's keeping track of the index of the minimum element. So we always want to make sure that whenever we see an element that's smaller than the current element, than the current minimum, we're updating it. So, so we the correct answer should be should be the third one. So it's array i. We only update index whenever we found a new minimum. Okay. Think of that. So. Yeah, so our array index kind of just represents the minimum element that we've found so far. And then we're always comparing each element. Is it smaller than the current minimum that we found? If it is, then we're, we're updating index to equal to i. Otherwise, we're not updating. So the second one will be the one that's identical to the one that we have in the last, where we're finding the maximum. And three will be the one that we're finding the minimum. So I hope that makes sense. Any questions? Yeah. Um, so I think we're good. That number one is off the table. <laughs> so we're comparing two elements. We're comparing elements in the array. So we have array i and array index. And the index is a variable that keeps track of the of the index of the minimum element. Right. So. For example, if, of, if we have an array of 10 elements and the, we're, we're up to the first three, so let's say like the first one is the minimum, the index will always just be, be zero, where our i is three, and then we move on to the fourth one, oh. we see that is the fourth one less than the one that we stored at index? Oh. If it is, then we're updating index. So the fourth one will be the one that's minimum from out of the first four elements, or five. <coughs> Any other questions? We're good? Yeah? And then? Five. Five. <laughs> okay, let's move on and just put four eight behind us. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. So Next for, one. Yeah. So for 5a, uh, you have this function, and it prints out I'm going to score something on the CS105 final. And obviously, you want this to say 100. 
So what you need to do is you need to write a function. Or sorry, so you see that fix array values, a custom function, um, is called right before the print statement. So you need to make uh, fix array values change the elements of the array um, so that when the elements of the array are added, it adds up to 100. So uh, yeah, give that a shot. And I'll give you a hint, you should, well, I, I guess there's multiple ways to do it, but a loop is one way you can think about doing this, looping through all the elements. Is anyone feeling good about the solution? Okay. If you equal them all, like, to 25, would that work? Do a for loop, so like, for i, let i equal zero, while i is less than four, i plus plus, and then array, whatever, i equals 25. Exactly, yeah, okay. that's it. The only thing I would say is you should use array.length instead of four, but okay, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So uh, just to repeat that to everybody, what she said was using a for loop. So she said within the function, you need to have for uh, let i equal zero. Far here, uh, but for let i equal zero, uh, i is less than array dot length. I'm just going to put dot L, just know that that means dot length, just, this is all the space I have. And then um, I plus plus, we know that we do this to increment the I variable. Uh, so then in here, uh, like we said, we want all of the values to add up to 100, and if there's four values, 100 divided by four is 25. So you want to set array at I, equal to 25. Now, why is it why is it array at i? Because as the loop goes through for each element of i and each element of the array, you want to set it to 25. And then you want to close the loop as well. Get that. Um, yeah, so basically this is going to set all the elements to 25 and it's going to print 100 and then you're going to get 100 on your final exam. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay, moving on to B. Uh, so we see here that we have to fill some stuff in to make this function work. Uh, and you can also see that there's only, well, the parameters for payday are missing. So you need to fill in some parameters. And then there's one line. So that one line has to uh, be something. And you can see from the comment there, it has to be some sort of calculation. Okay, so does anyone have any idea of how to even approach this question? So you have to send all the variables in the time and set up to the data function. And then you, uh, I just called, and then you subtract by the amount to the government and the amount to the Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the approach. So what she said, just to echo it, uh, was you need to, uh, send the variables, the values of the variables, into your payday function, and then do the calculation there. Um, so what that means is that on line five, you need to call payday with the variables. So you need to call it with earn, sent to gov, and vote. So that would look like this. That would look like this. Earned uh, sent to go. <coughs> and then uh, the last one's owed. So earned sent to go owed uh, like that. The one. Always important. And then within payday. 
So you're going to function play there. Let's just say PD means payday. Um, what you need to do is you need to calculate the amount minus tax minus debt. And to be honest, that hint is very straightforward. So um, you need to have amount, which is called AMT, minus tax, oh wait, sorry, uh, amount, uh, tax, and then debt. And these are the parameters for the function. And then all this function needs to do is it needs to just return a value, because you can see that uh, on line five, x equals payday, so we're trying to set x to a value that payday produces, which means that you're going to need to use return. So it's very important that you remember that. And if anyone has questions about that, does that make sense? You just returned amount minus tax minus step, right? Exactly, yeah. And t minus tax minus debt. Yeah, that's basically it. And then you just finish that, and then there you go. It works. And then six is three. Yeah. Five is all good. And six is just basic uh, rectangle and circle hit test. If you guys want to take a minute or two to finish it, complete. Yeah, this time is not as bad as the last question. If we were to have overtime, probably till 15-ish. Yeah. Assuming yeah. that we have the room for this. And we level. are... We have the Oh, perfect. And we are due to house as office hour time, or if you would like to operate this. Yeah. Six. Does everyone has an answer for A? Um, are sorry, the left side would be 45, right side 70. Based on the rectangle that's shown. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's 45, 70, 30, 35. Mm -hmm. And then point zero is less than the right side. Point zero is greater than the left side. Point one is greater than upside and point one is less than upside. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so the left side, so the left side, the left side, right side, upside, downside should be based on the rectangle that's drawn in the setup function on line 10, where you see the rect 45, 30, 25, 25. 
And if you recall the rect, rect x, rect y, and rect width, rect height from like an hour and a half ago. Um, so the rect, the left, no, the left side is just the the left x position, which is just 45. And then the the right side would be the 45 plus the width of the rectangle. So 45 plus 25, which is 70. And then the upside will be this, the y position of the rectangle, so it'll be 30. And then the downside will be the y position for the bottom part, so the, it will be upside plus the height of the rectangle, so 30 plus 25 is 55. I hope the variables are good. And then we just, in the draw function, we need to make the hit test work for any values of the points. From, from the points array. So instead of like using 50 or 35 directly, we want to use the array points and its index like at 0 or 1. So if you look at line 12, we, have, we, let, we draw the points, uh, we draw the point at point 0 and point 1. So basically point 0 is the x position for the point and point 1 would be the y position for the point. Um, so we always need to compare x with x, uh, x values with x values, y values with y, y values. So the right side and the left side is the x value, so we need put points, zero, whoops, points zero here. Zero. And we want to make sure that it is, it, it comes to the left of the right hand side, it comes left to, no, it comes left to the right hand side, it comes right to the left hand side. Yes. So, um, so it should be less than the right hand side, or you can also put it equal to here. It depends on like, whether you want the edge to be included or not. And then for the left hand side, you want to make sure it's to the right of the left hand side, so it's, it can be e greater or equal to. Um, yes, and then for the upside and downside, we're looking at the y value, so it would be points 1. And then we want to make sure it's greater than the, so it's below the upper side, so should, the y value is greater when it goes down. So it should be greater than or you can put equal to the upper side, and it should be less than or equal to the downside. So that would be the, the hit test for the rectangle hit test. Any questions? The, that should be good. And does anyone have an answer for, for B? Yeah? So for the first line, it's distance. The left X is Y. And point zero is distance. Yeah. And for the second line, it's D less than it looks like I'm going to open. Yes, that's right. And I completely forgot about the, the divider. <laughs> so, do I still do you still need me to write it down? Or? So, for line sixteen, we just need to use the distance functions to calculate the distance between the two points. So we have d is equal to the distance between. Ellipse x, ellipse y, and then again the points zero. The point zero is the x position for the point. Points one is the y position for the point. So we just put it in that order. Point zero, points y, points one. And the order doesn't matter. So you, you can you can either do uh, this. 0 0.0, 0 0.1, ellipse x, ellipse y, that also work. Or you can do like what I have here, so ellipse x, ellipse y, 0 0.0, 0 0.1. So that just calculated the, two, the distance between the two points. And then for the condition, we have if d, so the distance that we just calculate, is less than the radius of the circle, which is we have, uh, yeah, we have a variable for ellipse di diameter, and we just need to divide that by two. There. Oh, sorry. Oh, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
blind someone T? Oh, sorry, it's ellipse diameter. Sorry, I just, it's way too long. <laughs> Any questions about the rectangle hit test, circle hit test? All right. Yeah? Last year said you wanted to work on the edge also. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, sorry. You can either put like, really smaller, uh, less than here or less than here. Oh, like that. But you don't have to make it equal to unless they want it on the edge, right? Yeah, you hopefully they'll it. specify that in the, in the okay. question. If they specify that like, the edge should be included, then it's less than equal to, otherwise it's just strictly less than. Okay. All right, am I cool to erase this or really help us? All right, now we get to the fun part. Okay, image sound processing. Uh, so these couple of questions were basically all I could imagine the prof making questions on for the exam for this stuff. And it, there's not going to be very many marks, she said explicitly, on these topics. So it's important to know this, because you obviously want to get the most amount of marks you can. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just like not going to be as prevalent on the exam. Anyways, so what is the formula for aspect ratio? Width divided by height. Yeah. A, R, aspect ratio, equals image, dot, width, over, image, dot, height. And this question presupposes the answer. It says, can you use it to find height and width, which you can, and how so? How do we, how do, we do that? How do we isolate width or isolate height from this formula? Well, the height would be image width divided by the aspect ratio, ratio and then right. the width would be aspect ratio times image height. Yeah, and you can, I guess all you really need to remember is this, because if you just do algebra, like if you multiply both sides by image height, then uh, yeah, you can figure that out pretty much. Image height, image height. Aspect ratio, and then that clears this, and then you get width, and so on and so forth. That aspect ratio. Are you, for this, is it asking for a new image height, or is it just asking us if we're using the aspect ratio to then calculate it? Uh, if you were using the aspect ratio, like if you had two of the three, just calculating, like, what oh, okay, one. that, okay. That's, yeah, you, that's like how you, you can take it also and make a new image height, right? I feel like that would by multiplying the aspect ratio, I think something. So, something I don't like know. This stuff's too confusing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's in it's in uh, lecture seven. But yeah, that's pretty much the formula. Uh, I guess just know that. And then moving on to the next one. Uh, B. So this is the image processing template. You guys are probably quite familiar with it at this point. And then for this question, it's basically just asking, um, how can you make a grayscale image? Now, to rem or if you can recall from lecture seven, it said like a bunch of different effects, like you can make gradients by doing certain things, or you can make motion blur was another one of the examples. So the way to remember these is pretty much just remember them. Uh, are you going to have to know all of them? I think it would be a good idea to know them in the case that you have to use them, but are they all going to show up? Who knows? Um, but for this particular example, the, this was taken from a quiz question. And the quiz said that you need to take the minimum value of RGB. It, it gave you this in the instructions in order to be able to create the grayscale image. So uh, I'm just going to, I guess, just go through it. But um, what you would do for this, if you wanted to make a grayscale image, you'd have a variable. So below line 11 specifically, you declare a variable. So let's say let gray um, you want this to be the minimum of the RGB values what it, so 
at each pixel, there's going to be an R, a G, and a B value, and you simply just want it to be the minimum. So you could do something like this. Min R. And so this is using a nested minimum function. Uh, so this takes, so what this does is it compares G and B, takes the minimum, and compares R and the minimum of this. So this will always give you the minimum of R, G, and B. And then what you want to do when you actually process the pixels, on lines 19 through 21, uh, you'd simply just change those. Actually, I guess this question should be blanks there. But you just change those to be equal to Yeah, it should be blanks on line 19, 20, 21, where it says equals R equals G equals B. It should actually just be equals gray. Okay. Can you argue this by nesting the mid functions? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so at each pixel, so at each pixel you have kind of an array of like this. You have R value. Uh, G value, E value, alpha, and for this particular question, you just alpha. Um, and then say this is like 80, 90, 100. This nested min simply just compares G and B, it says what's the minimum, 90, and then it compares it to this, and then it picks, uh, so first this min does this, and then it does this. Okay, but can we put it as just min r comma g comma b? Because I know the min function takes more than two parameters. I'm actually not 100% sure about that. It, it, it can. Uh, if it's in an array, it can. No, I, I tried it for one of my labs. It's if it does uh, work it like that? I've done it before and it doesn't work. Yeah, it probably will give you an error message. Like, P5 works sometimes with error messages. Like, min, can minimum take three values? Like, min rgb? I don't think it does. No, minimum cannot take three values. Yeah. Minimum can only have two. Okay. Or an array. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or a number. Yeah. So you're taking the, the G and the B and you're, wait, no. Yeah. And you're comparing it to R. Why aren't we comparing, like, why are we comparing it to only R? Um, the position of these doesn't actually matter. The point of this is simply just pick the minimum value of these. Oh, so if it was like 90, 80, 100, it would pick the 80. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then the question would tell you that making a grayscale image picks the lowest value and then sets the pixels to that. And then I think that's all we have for image processing. Yeah. Wait, so and then what do you need to do again? Oh, sorry, yeah, I didn't write that on the board. Um, so on line uh, 19 through 21 where it says equals R, you can just scratch out R and then put gray. And then don't choose alpha, right? And then alpha stays the same. And then that would make a grayscale image. And yeah, once again, like review lecture seven uh, to see like all the different effects. And I don't know if you're gonna know those, but they were in the lecture, so yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, Serena. Now get to the fun part, the part that I like the most. Not really. Um, so the debugging. Actually, I will share the screen for. Teams, so that Great, so basically just read through part A, read through, there's only, well, excepting, except the last line where it's just one single bra braces, um, read through that four line, see if you can find an error, why the, the code is not working. Yes, exactly. So here. So always remember that for the for loop. So the initialize that we have i is equal to zero, and we're gonna compare is i greater than the array dot length, which is three. Is i greater than is zero greater than three? That's false. So we're just not gonna enter the loop at all, and we'll just skip to after line five. So that's why it's not like the print statement. None of the print statement will ever be executed. Um, yeah, so that's so that would be that would be why no nothing will be printed if you run this piece of code. 
And yeah, so the array itself does not have any effect on it because array can store any type of, of values. So yeah. So is it an infinite loop, or it just doesn't even? Run? It doesn't even. It doesn't even enter the loop because, okay. because on line three, what we do, what we do is we set i is equal to zero, and we check is i is greater than the length. So is i greater than three? No. So we just skip, uh, like skip to line five, like after even after line five. So it, it wouldn't even enter the loop. All good for part eight. Yeah. Hopefully, all these debugging are quick and short. Um, and then look at part B. So the code sh is producing the wrong. We want to find all elements in the array that is greater than 10, but the code is not working. How can we fix the code? So there is one intentional um, error that I made, and there's one that I did not make intentional, but find it out. I got an error. <laughs> so see if you can find it. Yeah? In line four, it should be array i greater than 10? Yeah, exactly. So here, because we want to make sure we're comparing each element of an array with the, with the number 10, instead of comparing the whole array with a number. Yeah? Do you need to declare count? Yeah, that's right. That's the one mistake that I made. So you should actually declare your count somewhere. So you could do it on line two, you could do it before line one, anywhere you would like. Just make sure that you let count is equal to zero, and then you run through that piece of code. Otherwise, the the line five count plus plus that will not work because count is that that line is basically equal to count is equal to count plus one. But what is yeah? What is count initially? We don't know. And like, what are we assigning it to? We don't know. So it's going to give you an error. So make sure you do declare all the variables that you use before you uh, you make sure make sure you declare all of the variables that you use before you use them. But yes, yeah, there's two errors there. And is part B all good? Any questions? And here's part C. But the code has an infinite loop. What is the error and how do we fix it? Yeah. Is it because the x and y aren't defined yet? Um, oh, wait. Yeah, that's true. Actually, let's pretend that it says on line one and two, it says let x is equal to 20, let y is equal to 20. OK, and then inside it, those would be gone. No. So yeah, so the, the ones that are causing the problem is actually should be these two here. The ones that want them to, make, to cause the problem is the x and y here. So like, let's pretend line one and line two says let x, let x is equal to 20, let y is equal to 20, and, and the everything remaining, else is changed. Every, everything else is unchanged, yeah. I'll make sure I update this one on there. I don't know what happens if you don't have it. What if it's just like a random number? I don't remember. If you don't get here, then it won't run properly. Because it's, it's not set to an integer value, it's just set to a null value. Yeah. You can't type it. We can even try this now. But actually, we're running out of So yeah, any questions for this one? So the, the part that's making it an infinite loop is line five and six, yeah. because we, we, we declare, we, we, we assign x, we assign 20 to x and y every time in the loop, even though we update them on line, nine and, on line eight and nine. Um, but that's still going to be, but th then again, if we enter the, uh, the loop uh, once more, that will just get reset to 20, and then we just add 20, reset to 20, pass to 20. So x and y will always just be in between 20 and 40. Either of those. Yes? Does it wreck to have more variables? I'm sorry? Doesn't wreck that rect needs to have four parameters. Oh yeah, rect is the, I believe it's the same. Uh, yeah, it's the same as the circle. It's the same as the ellipse, so the fourth one is optional. Oh. Sorry, I should put square there. I was in a rush. I never use square. I just made this like two hours ago. Three hours ago, so. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, now get into the most fun part, writing. Whole code on a piece of paper. And probably the most important part. <laughs>
All right. So yeah, this is the last question. And yeah, like I said, this is probably going to be the most important because up like this thus far, you haven't really written any questions uh, or any coding like full coding questions on paper, and you're going to need to do that for the exam. I can't say for certain if you're going to need to write a full program, but worst case scenario, you do. And writing code is a lot different than typing code, so this is a pretty important thing to practice. Um, but let's read this question. So we need to write a sketch that draws an ellipse of diameter 10 centered on the left edge of the canvas if a variable edge is equal to true. If edge is equal to false, draw the ellipse in the center of the canvas. So it's either going to be on the left side or the center. Your code should work for any canvas size, which means we need to use width and height. Um, if you see that, you can just think that. And then your ellipse should be in draw, and edge can be assigned to either true or false when you write your code. Uh, so give this a shot and see if you can get it to work on paper. Don't test it on your computers, just test yourself and see if you can write it out on paper. Oh, and the bonus too, don't forget about that. default on the other page, uh, as I see as one of my final exam information. But but you should first. still write them. Like what what yeah, assume like the canvas background. Oh yeah, background yeah, yeah. Still, need still write that. What assume the default means is just like stroke like um, stroke big weight one. Yeah, yeah stroke weight is one, like canvas will be one hundred by one hundred. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. okay. But we still need to create the actual canvas inside. Right? But you'll still need to write that. Okay. Yeah. So for the first part, not the bonus, we'll get to that, but just for the draw function, um, who can tell me what the correct answer is? Or do you guys need more time? Yes. Okay, yeah, take a bit more time.
Okay, looks like people are finishing up. Okay, so let's take a look at this drop function. Uh, okay, so what's going to be in this draw function? Um, if edge, then x equals zero. Else, x equals width divided by two. And then ellipses, x height divided by two, ten. But I also declared like x and edge at the top as global variables, but like let x semi colon. Yeah, yeah, so your solution would work. Um, you, I guess, should be careful about defining variables. If the question says, I don't think that the exam will tell you explicitly if you're allowed to define variables or not, and I don't know if you're going to lose marks for doing that. Um, so would, I would err on the side of caution. How would you do that without defining a variable, though? Uh, so if you didn't want to define a variable... You just put ellipses, draw ellipses. That's yeah. stupid. Why is that stupid? <laughs> that the question is stupid. It has one line less, actually. Oh, it's one line oh, two lines. Two lines. Without declaring X and without like, Oh, okay. It like, just seems like you're drawing the function, drawing <laughs> and using the function ellipses twice, and it seems dumb. Like, like I don't know. <laughs> just not dumb, but like, why? I don't That's know, fair. It work. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I did is I set up the how drawing the function, and then bracket it true, and then I have I another function, really function know, called function drawing lips. And I have edges, How would that even work? And then I have if edges equal to two. I guess, I don't know. Then either of them is equal to zero, yeah, zero, like ten. Also, ellipses equal to width height divided by two and height divided by two. I can't tell you in this case. Yeah, yeah, so I think I got most of that. But the important part was like the conditional. Um, so, yeah. so you put the ellipses in it, and you take out the x. Like, x is nothing. Yeah, exactly. If you only use their given. So like, you would be able to use edge, obviously. Yeah. And then set it to equal to true at the start. Or false. Depending or on whatever the question says. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. That that's actually a pretty good question to ask the prof to clarify with. If you will be able to define or like if something asks you uh because I don't know. And I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll write on the board for uh, okay, so what we've been talking about up here. Uh, so basically, if we want to draw an ellipse based on a conditional, which is what the question is asking, well, first we need to have background because that's important. Uh, is coding style very. No, no, no. It's, I, I was saying no. No. If you get like, enough you can in that page. Accidentally do like yeah. un, like add a capitalization. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. okay. Well, yeah. We won't mark that straight on paper. Oh, you guys are marking it. She is marking oh, it. Oh, oh, we did not say that. <laughs> 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 that <last> part. Cats out of the bag. I knew it. That's why I don't want to. You are the TA. Who else is going to mark it? We're not a TAT. We have nine TAs. Oh. Anyway, so yeah, let's We're a <laughs> So, okay, so basically, this question is just trying to draw an ellipse in two different positions. And if you read the question, it says if something, then draw something here, and else something else. So that basically implies that you need to use a condition, um, if that makes sense. So then, what it would look like is. Okay, I'll write it here. I'll have to be small, but um, if edge uh, we want to draw an ellipse. Why is the the exposition five? 
Oh, okay. Actually, okay. So that is an inconsistency with this question. We talked about this before. It could be five. It could be zero. When I was writing the question, I thought of it as like touching the edge of the canvas instead of like on the edge of the oh, canvas. Oh, okay. So then it's the radius. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like that. Don't don't worry it about that. Actually... It could be zero. It could be yeah. five. Okay. The point of the question. Is like, Just yeah. If you like it, crunch it, make it small. Good thought, though. <laughs> okay, um, that's quite messy. <laughs> but if anybody can't read this or whatever, feel free to come closer. Does anyone like? Does everybody see this? Does anyone need me to explain any parts of it? Check it or for the solution. Oh, sorry, did you have a question? Should we go with the bonus as well? Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, before we move on, we'll take a look at the bonus. Uh, so the bonus is just changing the value of edge between true and false to make the ellipse move from the left side of the canvas to the center and then so on and so forth, back and forth. Um, so, okay, so if we look at the bonus, it says when the key A is pressed, update edge to its opposite value. So when, when the key is pressed, should immediately set off like a light bulb in your head. When the key is pressed, function key pressed. So we're going to be using that. How would it be phrased if it was key is pressed? Uh, it would say like when the key is held down. I don't know for sure because I haven't seen the question. Yeah, so, yeah. But like, yeah, it, you'd be able to tell. Key, the key is pressed doesn't, like, it only works like once. And it doesn't keep adding as the key is pressed if you hold it in key tapping, right? That's, yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so for the bonus. I'm going to write it up here. It would, like, if you were writing this, it would be lower, but just so close to something to not equal itself. So we have function key pressed here. Um, so looking back at the bonus, when the key A is pressed, um, so that means from the notes way back in like one of the earlier lectures, we looked at when keys are pressed, making things happen. But we can use a conditional for this. Um, just real quick, so if... Oh, sorry, I missed your question. Uh, you could, but you don't need to. Yeah. Because if edge is not true, then it's false. So otherwise it, it would be false. But yeah, good question. Well, no, not A, because what's okay. A? Okay, um, think about what A is. So yeah, for this part. A is all the keys. So if key is equal, and we know that we check for equality using three equal signs. Uh, so if key is equal to A, uh, well, looking at the question again, we want to update edge to be its opposite value. Uh, so a little trick you can do for this is well, we want to update edge, so we're going to have an assignment. We're assigning the variable, and then what we're going to do, this is the, the magic, and some of you probably have done this before or seen this, we're going to update it to not edge. Um, 
So basically, just to explain this, this, if you can't see, is an exclamation mark, and this means not, and it applies to true and false values. So we have edge equals true. So edge is going to be equal to the opposite of edge. So then this, this is going to turn false. Um, so whenever you see an exclamation mark, it means not. Uh, and not basically just the opposite. Cool. Um, yeah, so the last question, uh, will we help you not? So I was okay, so for the last question, it's going to be homework. So try it on your own and come to office hours if you want uh, for us to like go over the solution with you or whatever. We still have office hours until Tuesday? They go until Friday, yeah. But we have a special schedule coming up. We have office hours every day next week. Also, I do a late night on Tuesday night because that's the time uh, that project view. So I be on call and you can ask questions. And we will have office hour after this. Yes. Fifteen minutes. Person. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but if you have questions, you can come and ask us. Yeah. Also, uh, by the way, if you are using image, copyrighted image, sound, and other things for your final project, you need to cite it in the read me section. And you don't need to do like a proper citation. Like for example, like background music. If you had like a YouTube URL that you're taking the music from, you could just do like. Uh, music from URL. Does it have to be um, called CC? Like no, common doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, but however, if you are using if you are using a copyrighted music, your yours might not be eligible to be an example for future. Oh, like this, yeah. yeah, just start. Yeah.